Okay. Now we're recording. We're live. I'm not going to go back over that again, but um, this is where I would post these meetings. So you can see some of the topics that I have set up tactics. We'll get back to that in a second player resources. This is where I have the player's code of conduct, um, player nutrition, our warm up routine will be in here. This is just a standard one that I found roller exercises. If any of the girls use rollers, players meetings, you'll have uh, posted in here player safety information. It's a lot of good stuff in here already that I started as a base. But um, tonight after, after we're done with this meeting, I will convert this recording into probably a YouTube link and um, I will post it in here. So if you ever, if you ever um, uh, miss a meeting or if anyone that's not here or your significant other, whoever it is, and you want them to take a look at the meeting, they'll be able to just come in here and, and get it. And it'll be right under the parent meeting section. Uh, just to continue to go through this a little bit more. Um, there's a survey in here under this parent meeting section. So I wanted to talk about that quickly, but I'll get back to that in a second. Parent resources. There's a parent code of conduct. That's the official sting one. Uh, I put the same document that was in player nutrition for the, the players. I put it in the parent resources as well. So you can access that as well. And just to kind of show you what that looks like, all you do is click here and it's a PDF that you click it and it opens up. So it's very simple. Um, we'll get back to the homework section in a few. That's some of the stuff that I already gave the girls, the fitness testing. That's something that we still have to do. And then I know this isn't on a lot of your minds, but college resources, I'm going to start building that. I'm building it. And you can see over here, I have my 06 girls team and I have my 03 boys team. They're much closer to the, um, the college resources stuff. So, that, but I'm actually, everything I build into one, I likely I'm going to replicate into the other one. Just so, you know, the parents have it. Um, if anyone starts thinking about it, or if you have an older kid in another sport, some of this stuff, you know, applies. So, um, It'd be just a, an area for some good resources. Back up here to the, the intro survey. This is something that I need everyone to actually do. If you don't feel like you want to be involved in the, the Google Classroom or you want maybe just one account for the girls and that you can share, or if you want your own account, you know, it, it's, it's all up to you. But this survey here, um, I'm going to need everyone to do so I'll keep it in here, but I will also send it through email so you can do that as well. This is going to be a season intro survey that I'm going to do with all my teams. We'll do it next year as well. We'll do it every year. Just an introduction to the season. This is where you will put your name up. I'm sorry, the player. This is all the players information, player name, uh, parent name, um, desired position, uh, desire to play in high school. I'm just trying to get, this is just for me to gain an understanding of where some of the girls stand with their commitment level and their um, availability and their interest and where they want to go, what their goals are. So their desire to play in high school, yes or no. Um, their desire to play collegially. I kind of just was playing with that a little bit and I gave you a scale. Uh, and then, oh, they won't let me see the next one unless I fill this out. Sorry. Uh, that's the only required one. So I'll just do that. So then the next section is, does the player play another sport competitively? Is the 06 girls sting team, this player's primary extracurricular activity? Um, if no, just kind of put, you know, what it is, or even if you don't want to tell me what is their priority, um, just let me know, you know, that there is something else or what it is or whatever you feel is necessary information for me to know. And then this section is important as well. So the, the different seasons, I, break, I broke it up by season, by the months there, and the player's best, you know, typical availability. Um, I'm going to talk about our training sessions over the fall in a few, but I kind of like to know what's available or where. I'd like you to take this question as where, which days will, no matter what happens, um, other than like an emergency or family thing or vacation or whatever, no matter what you have scheduled, our, the, the Sting team will come first. All right, that'll give me a good understanding. Like if you have something coming up that you know is every Tuesday, but if we have practices on Tuesday and they would go to the practice instead of that event, then don't add Tuesdays, if that makes sense. So I'm really just trying to get a good understanding of the, all the players' availability. Um, to be honest, I don't, think it's probably nearly impossible that I'll be able to 
make the practice schedules and our team events and all that stuff around everybody's schedule, especially with the numbers on the roster. So it's, it's more of a tool for me to try to do the best I can to figure it out. Here's one example over, and we'll get back to this in a little bit, but over the fall, we're looking at three practices a week. Cause I want the, the girls at this level, this age, they need to be practicing three times a week. Um, I'm either going to have it Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I typically don't like to have Fridays because that's the day before a game and they need to recover. Um, and parents don't usually hate me if I have practice on Fridays. So um, it's either Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I'll go back and look at this and see, you know, over the fall months, what's, what, um, what's the, you know, the majority of the team, would they rather have Mondays or Tuesdays? So that's just one example of how I would use that. Um, this is another very important question. This is the last question. If a play, if you guys have a vacation that you go to every year, it's, or a certain week where it's just every year, this week we go somewhere. We don't, maybe you don't know exactly where it is, but this is our family vacation block out week, whatever. Um, I'd like to know that just so that gives me a good idea for planning for, for next year and, and throughout the year. Um, what I typically like to do, and this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this again in a few, but I'm going to plan out the entire year for you. So, you know, the entire year what it looks like um and i'll do that almost to the com you know most complete that i can make it um up to tournaments you'll know all the tournaments all the way through the spring into next summer i'm even going to put a tournament next summer for those of you that continue next year um so you know kind of that's you know when you're planning your summer vacations in the middle of winter uh you know that there'll be a tournament that specific weekend so um but I'll get back to tournaments in a few. So this is a survey that I really need everyone to do. Like I said, it's going to be in the Google Classroom. If you really don't want to, for this first survey, because of the importance of the of uh, the information, if you, uh, I'm going to I'm going to send it to your emails as well, so you have uh, the opportunity to access it. Um, 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 I just want to see if there's anything else specific that's in here. There's a lot of good information in here. I would definitely recommend the girls go through it all. You guys can go through whatever you decide you want to go through. Um, I think you, you'll realize very quickly with me that I put a lot on the girls in terms of responsibility. I, I want them to learn to be in a, independent in a sense, I guess. So if there's anything that they have an issue with, whether it's like, Hey coach, why am I not starting? Or, Hey coach, how can I get some more playing time? Or, Hey coach, um, whatever it is, even if, you know, they're going to miss a practice and they should let me know. I had an example. I'm not going to call her out right now, but a girl left a, her ball at practice. She contacted me and she said, coach, I left my ball. Do you have it? Can I come pick it up? And I appreciated that because, you know, that it's, it's kind of just giving the player the sense of responsibility and the sense of ownership over, over their game and in turn, you know, possibly their career. Right. So um, it's just very important for me that the girls start to take, you know, take uh, account for, um, for all their stuff. They should be packing their own bag. You know, they should be making sure that they're even if they don't do their own laundry, which they probably don't, but on, if we have practice on Monday, on Saturday or Sunday, the girls should be like, hey, mom, my practice jersey is dirty. Can, can we wash this? Can we, you know, can we do this? But they should be in charge of packing their bag. They should be in charge of doing all that stuff. Um, one thing that I always – I don't do it anymore because I don't play that much anymore. But what I used to do in – it actually started for me in high school. But the girls, after every practice or maybe at the end of the week, so they don't do it um, you know, multiple times during the week, especially if it's a rainy week, the girls should be getting their cleats out and I used to use a toothbrush, but get their cleats out and clean their cleats, right? The, the more you let a cleat sit there wet, dirty, disgusting, they don't last as long and they kind of, their performance starts to go down. Uh, the performance of the cleats start to go down. So I used to do it every week during high school. I would, you know, clean my cleats. So it's something that kind of just stuck with me. I don't know if the girls are going to go to that extent, but you know, that's things that they should be doing on their own. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have the girls take responsibility for some of this stuff, right? So if they're ever going to miss a practice, I mean, the, the availability feature in TeamSnap is a gift and a curse for me. One, if you're not using it at all, 
Like I like to know exactly how many players are coming to practice the day before. So when I'm planning my sessions or I'm adjusting my sessions because I have my season year planned, I like to know how many players because there's a huge difference in a practice session between nine and 19 players. And for the most part, all the parents have been very good about doing that. But I do think that's probably the parents doing it. All right. So if the girls, the girls at the beginning of the week should just check in with mom and say, hey, am I able to go to practice Monday and Wednesday this week? Great. I'll update my availability. So what I was going to do, and this is what I'm planning on doing, so I'm telling you that I'm doing this. There's a feature in TeamSnap where I can mark all availability, all availability for all events as a yes. So I'm expecting everyone to be at everything. Then at that point, it'll be either your or the player's responsibility to change that to no. I really can't stand the maybes or the no responses. Um, that's not helpful in any way to me because yeah, maybe they'll be there. I mean, if it's a true, maybe and you don't know, that's completely different. But if it's a maybe because you just forgot to do it, then it's, it's just tough for me, especially for games, right? Practices I can adjust, I can adapt, but you know, for games, if I need to know, um, if the, the players are going to be at the game, if we have enough players, then it's really important for you to mark your availability. Right. So I'm going to adjust that, and but I would like the players to start to take responsibility for that. They should all, at this age, I'm sure they all have a phone, or maybe they don't have a phone, but they sh if they do, they should have Team Snap on their phone. They should have their own account of Team Snap because there's a player account and there's a parent account, and they should be starting to get this information, um, and they should be able to go into the Team Snap app and, and you know click whether they're going to be there or not. It's, it's not that difficult. One thing that um, I'm going to have the girls do um, once I start working on captains and deciding who's the captain, 15 minutes into practice, I'm going to have one of the girls take out their phone and check the attendance for the practice to make sure what's in team snap is accurate to what the players that are there. That is, that's more of a, um, refer back to thing for me. So I could refer back and say, you know, this player hasn't been to nine practices this month. Then, you know, then what, what can we do? How can I touch base? What can, how can we, you know, help the situation? Is it a ride thing or, or whatever it is? So, um, yeah, so those are the certain things that certain things that I just wanted to uh, make you aware of with some of the technology and the stuff that we have. It's 722. So I need to keep moving on. There's a chance that we get cut off at 740. So I'm going to roll through uh, more of this. If you have any questions about the Google Classroom or how to set it up, um, please let me know. But really, it's just a matter of me going in here and adding a student. They'd get a link. I'll send it to everyone's email addresses. And they click it, and then they're in the classroom. Then they have the option of downloading the application on their phone as well. Okay, so that is the, the technology. So I went through the technology. I went through the survey. Please get that survey done soon. Season plan. So this is this has been the biggest draw, or not draw, I'm sorry, the biggest stressor for me for the last month or so. Trying to figure out how to approach approach this group and knowing that the original goal was to have a an 06 team and then have an 06 or 07 team. That obviously didn't happen. We brought in a couple of players officially right now we have on the roster we have 20 20 or 21 20 players on the roster as a primary and three secondary players lined up to to join us for whatever they can make and we'll, we'll talk about the secondary players another time um but that's the way it's that's how it's kind of shaped it's shaped out so far so um with that being said, there's a chance that players can still be added that will make the the two teams, the two rosters a little bit easier to manage. But the way we're going to approach it is this. I didn't think, well, technically with 20 players, you can, um, you can, you can have just one roster, right? And you can only dress 18 for games. And that means two players every game, every game have to sit out or not dress, come and not dress. I actually know of teams in this area that are doing that. That's, that's not me. That's, that's not, what I was looking to do at all with this group. So the way it worked out, I, I had to get extra approvals for extra money and extra budgets and stuff like that. But um, I worked my magic and I was able to get certain things approved. So this, we're going to approach it entering two leagues. Actually, we're entering the same league, EDP, but we're entering two rosters into the league. So we are going to enter one roster in the premier 
three or four. I'm I'm gonna I want to take an opportunity, a couple opportunities over the the summer. Um, I think at this point, and and Kate, um, Tracy will would um would be able to speak to it a little bit more. Cause I we I think we already submitted for championship, and we are for the for the um, second team, and we submitted for the premier. For I believe for the first team this past year, uh, they they bumped us up. So, um, but that's what we submitted for. So we're gonna have one in the premier brackets and one in the championship brackets. So with that being said, everyone wants to know, well, which team am I on? And I'm telling you right now from the beginning, there you're not on a set team. It's go. You're gonna. I'm gonna have for logistical reasons. I have to separate them. I'm gonna split it eleven and eleven. No, I'm sorry, 10 and 10. Um, and then add the secondary players. But this is a true opportunity for the players to just work and work and work and earn, right? Earn their positions, right? Earn the opportunity to play into that premier game, right? Each week we'll have two, two games. And you, you can obviously understand with 20 players, if you have 10 on each, you know, 15 showing up to each game, that means there's potentially five players or even 10 different players per weekend that are playing in two different two games. All that really means is you get extra opportunities to play. Yes, one will be at a little bit lower level, one would be at a little bit higher level, but my goal is to put all the players in the best position to develop, right? Develop their game and develop not only just the technical, but right, the technical, tactical, the psychosocial, there's four different aspects to the game that the players need to develop. And this is going to change on a weekly basis. So for example, if player A, not able to show up to, it could be the best player on the team, whoever that is, could be the best player on the team, not able to show up to any practices that week. Well, that's something that I would say, okay, you weren't able to show up to practices this week. This is this week, I want you to play on the, on the championship team. That is really not a punishment to that player. That's more of a gift to another player that worked really, really hard, has been working really hard, shows up to everything, and they were at all the practices that week. That'll give them an opportunity to uh, play in that premier game if I think they are, if it's developmentally appropriate for them. So for me, it's more work, right? It's just kind of a scheduling nightmare for me. Um, but that's what the best situation for these girls with the, with the situation is. It'll give them the desire to work hard. It'll give them the, you know, push to say, mom, no, I don't want to go to this. I really want to go to practice. I want to play this team this weekend. I want to play on that team this weekend. Um, maybe they, you know, I know I completely understand that parents have busy lives and sometimes you just can't get them there. And I will never fault a player for a parent not being able to, you know, get their kids to practice or whatever it is. Um, but I do ask that you, if you know you can't get to practice because of just the, a ride situation, that you ask, right? That you ask somebody else. There's, like I said, 20 players on this team plus a couple of secondary players. Someone in your area is probably coming to practice. Um, that may not be true for everyone, but it's true for the most part. So. I just want the players to have a sense of commitment, a sense of, um, you know, the ownership of this program. And to be completely fair to you, you guys are paying a lot for this program. This is the first program that I'm a part of that is paying this much as a parent, right? So I was working it out with Sting where, um, and not that you need to know this, but I was able to take on less money so we can put more money into the program. And I'm just trying to give the girls the best possible um, season, not only, and it's going to be a struggle for some of them, some of them that might really, really want to play on that, that first team, but you know, they're not, they're not there yet. It's, it might be a mental struggle for them, but that's, that's part of the process, right? That's part of learning where we, where you need to be, what you need to do to get better, asking your coach, like, Hey, where am I struggling? What can I do to get better? Is there something at home I can be doing to get better? And actually doing that stuff at home, right? I gave all the girls stuff to do at home with a little bit of reading, um, some ball mastery work, and some fitness. If they're doing it at home, there's no doubt in my mind that they're going to get better throughout the course of the summer, right? I can teach them the tactics of the game, but I really don't like to spend a lot of time on the technical part of the game. That is stuff that they can really, truly do at home. 
They find a ball, they find a wall, they pass the ball back and forth to, against the wall for an hour, right? That's stuff that they can really do at home. And I don't want to really waste a lot of time because that's not teaching them. That's really, that's really just doing stuff that's repetitive. Like that's, it's just being repetitive and being repetitive and just do this thing over and over and over and over again. I don't want to really waste time with that. Now at this age, at this level, they do need technical work. So if I feel like some of them girls, and to be fair, no one on this team or no one on any team that I ever coach ever is technically like flawless. Everyone needs to improve. I'm still, I still juggle sometimes because, you know, I still try to play and my technique is not perfect. So the girls will always need to improve. So I will fit it in here and there, but I really don't like to waste a lot of time with it. I told the girls already this summer, we do a lot of playing, a lot of scrimmaging because the best way to learn this game is to play right over the winter. Typically, you're in a smaller space, and I like to do futsal over the winter as well as turf training. So in the winter, I really, really focus on the technique, um, but I try not to do that during season, and I try not to do it over the summer. They should be spending the majority of the time with me playing, and that allows me to stop them when they do something wrong as a team, like something wrong tactically, and then I can fix that, and then they continue to play. So I do a lot of small-sided games. It's proven very effective. My 3 boys team has turned out to be a very, very good team. And that's with the proven method that I've taken over the last, I've been with them for four years now, since they were, I guess, yeah, like your age, um, maybe a year before. So they were not very good then at all. And now they're one of the top teams in, 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 the, uh, in the area with not a lot of turnover. I took players that were, that were not there by any means. And, and uh, we turn them around and we get them, I got them all to make their high school team. So um, what I've done so far, I don't, I don't go through a lot of teams. I don't work with a lot of teams. I've, my O1 boys team I worked with for eight straight years until they just graduated this year. My O3 boys team I've worked, no, I'm sorry, seven straight years. And then my O3 boys team I worked with four straight years. My goal is to work with this team until they're through their entire um, high school career and they go off to college as, as young ladies. So that's my goal. And it is a process. I promise you there's a process to this whole thing. It's going to take some time, but they, the girls will get there. Um, this is my first year working with them. So it's going to take some time to get through a lot of this. Um, okay. I got to keep moving on because I'm running short on time. So that's how the, ter- the rosters are going to work out. Again, I, I have to split them logistically, but the EDP rules allows me to just shift any player for any game to any team within, as long as they're within the club. So that's the, what we're, the approach we're going to take. So, so um, each week, I'm not going to do it for that week, right? So my practices, my evaluations will be set for probably two weeks in advance. So you'll know which game I, I hope that you'll be able to attend. It's also going to be based on your availability. So if you say, hey, three weekends from now, I'm not available Sunday. Well, then you're slated for the Saturday game, whichever, whichever one it is, right? If you're not available um, you know, early morning or late afternoon, then you're slated for whatever one makes sense. So this gives you more of an opportunity to, you know, if you can't make something, you still get game time that weekend. So in the end, it's going to be a good thing for the girls. They're just going to have the opportunity to play more. And in the end, like I said, there's nobody safe on that first team. If you're, if I, it's the best player on the team and if they're not showing up or if they're playing around at practice and they're not working hard or they just, maybe they're coming off an injury and they need some lower level play. Well, those are opportunities to play on that second team. And there's nothing wrong with playing on the second team. It just means you're working at your level to get to that next level. And it could be that next week that you're getting to that next level. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure you can have plenty of questions about that. Please ask me after this. Tournaments. Like I said, I'm going to have um, the tournaments completely planned out for you. I have a list of tournaments I'd like to go to right here, if you can still see my screen. Um, there's boys and girls dates there. So I'm going to finalize this tonight and I'm going to get it into team snap and then I'm going to find out everyone's availability, but I don't want to plan a tournament and tell everyone, um, that the, the tournament weekend is that weekend. And then all of a sudden I get, uh, those surveys back and there's four girls that go on vacations that weekend. Right. So, uh, I'm going to wait for your surveys and try to, I'm going to finalize which ones I want to go to wait for your survey replies. And then I will put it all in team snap. So you have all of it. Um, there was something else I want to say, about, Oh yeah. So in our season plan that you got when you first, first signed on with me, there was a preseason tournament. 
a postseason tournament. Um, another preseason tournament for spring and another postseason tournament. So it's four tournaments. I got approved with this group that we're going to go to six. With that being said, all players, all 20 players are only guaranteed the four. So that just gives, that gives me the flexibility to bring all 20 girls because I do not like to bring, and this is for games as well, I don't like to have 18 players there. Right? I want the girls that are dressed and ready to play to play. And it's very, very difficult to get 18 players into a tournament game that's only 30-minute halves. So at most, if I'm bringing two goalies, which is typical, I should bring two goalies. Um, at most, I'd like to bring like 16. So that means everyone gets a chance to play. The well, last thing I want to do is ask one of your parents to drive to, say, Virginia, and there's 18 players, and you, got, you get to watch your, your kid play for a total of what, like a half hour over the course of the weekend. That's not fair to anyone. But also understand at this level, I'm getting to the point um, at, with these girls that playing time is not guaranteed by any sense they, they're going to work for it and I'm not going to bring players to the game and not play them ever but they need to understand that they're playing time they need to earn they need to work for it and you put that on the the shoulders of the girls you'll be surprised they're just going to start working harder and they, they want that playing time they're going to get it um, and then it also comes in positionally like how you know maybe you're the you know fourth best player on the team but you're also the fourth best striker on the team so do i then say um you know you're the fourth best striker so you're you're getting half the amount of playing time or do i say hey let's play this position let's work hard let's get good at this position if this striker you know available a striker minutes open up you play that as well but let's learn this position now we go into high school learning and knowing two or three positions it's a very good way to approach it um so I'm going to have the girls play a lot of positions over this this year. Um, hopefully, and if I, to be honest, if I see that someone is a pure striker or a pure defender, I, it's best for me to just train them as that, but give them opportunities to play others when the time comes. Um, but um, that's different approaches that I'll take throughout the year. For the summer, I really, so I need everyone to go into a Team Snap, hopefully immediately. And we have a potential tournament in team snap for this summer and there's like nine players that didn't respond yet so i have no idea if we can go or not and i can't get scheduled until i know if we have enough players i don't think it's fair i did this for both teams i don't think it's fair that i say for summer tournaments hey we're going to this tournament this weekend if you can't make it sorry um because your your vacations are all already planned and i i completely understand that so with your vacations being planned already that's why I want to know about next year. That's why I'll plan next year's um, tournament as long as it doesn't conflict with anyone's yearly vacation. So I'll plan next year's tournament and the rest of the year. But for this summer, the, I think the fairest way to do it is try to get everyone there. It, well, not everyone because you can't bring 20, but at least 15 players there, 16 players there. And then I got approval. Instead of having four tournaments, we're going to have six tournaments. So like I said, everyone should be able to get to four and I will guarantee that I make sure everyone is at four tournaments, even if I need to get a seventh one approved or something like that. All right, but I will put all that out there. But please go into Team Snap and let me know if you can get to this August tournament. Typically, what I like to do and what I'll do next year, I'm going to start talking fast because I'm not sure if I'm getting cut off in two minutes or not. Um, typically, what I like to do and what I'm going to do next year is for a – oh, I just thought about this. Some of these girls are going to be going to high school next year. All right, that might throw off these plans, but I'm going to say it anyway. So I like to have a camp, but I like to have the camp leading up to the tournament. That's the preseason tournament on Labor Day weekend to prepare for the season, which typically starts the weekend after Labor Day weekend. I think that all made sense what I just say. So camp, Labor Day weekend tournament, weekend uh, the, the season starts the next weekend. So with that being said, th there's so many players that can't make – camps this week this year i tried one week if i do another week there's other players that can't make it what i'm thinking of doing um is a uh is to have a, an in season camp for that first week when the players are back at school so the first week of school is usually a little bit light you can tell me otherwise if you think if i'm wrong but if the players if I have, like say, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three-hour practice, that will allow me to accomplish everything that I need to accomplish 
in terms of a camp. A camp for me isn't getting physically ready. It's getting tactically ready for the season. But if we don't go to a Labor Day tournament and we just have an in-season three-day, three-hour camp, um, that I think is the approach that I'm going to take just based, based on the availability that, um, that I've gotten back for the camps. I really want all the girls to be, have the opportunity to be at these camps because I don't want to start, you know, changing language and start talking to them about in season and like, Oh coach, I wasn't at that camp. All right. Um, so that's the camp. I don't think I'm going to have it that week that I have it currently scheduled. I think I'm just going to do the in season Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, no, I'm sorry, Monday's Labor Day that first week. So maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that first week, just do a three-hour session. The girls will probably hate me. You guys get a break for three, six, nine hours that week. Um, but it'll be, uh, it'll be important and it'll be effective. Um, I think I went through everything. Um, the summer workouts. The summer workouts, please just have the girls do it. The reading's important. The fitness is important. The ball mastery is very important. A lot of these girls are struggling with their foot skills. Um, a lot of them are very good with their foot skills. But the more comfortable they can get with the ball, the game comes very easy. So I'm actually going to use Google Classroom to ask the girls to upload one, maybe one video a week of them doing one of the skills. Maybe just like a 30-second clip of them doing something. That just puts a little bit of pressure on them to, um, to actually do it, one, and do it good and try and practice before they post their video, right? It's one thing to be in the privacy of their own room and nobody's watching and they just drew it and try and it's like, oh, I'm good at it. But it's another thing to record it and let everyone else see it as well. So I think that I'm going to ask them to do that, but I will, I'm going to have uh, an email following this that, um, and I apologize if we get cut off any second. I, I, I'm, I'm through everything, but um, last time it let me go over a, a few minutes. So, um, but I'm, I'm going to, set up the Google Classroom. I'll send out the links. If the players themselves don't have an email, two things with that. They probably should at some point get an email very soon. Um, a very um, professional, in a sense, email that, um, that they will eventually use for college recruiting. One tip that I, I got um, recently was if they can do either first initial, last name, or first name, last name, and also their year of graduation, right? The, the class of whatever. So if it's like Eric DeFolvio class of 2004, yes, that's when I graduated high school. Um, that's an email setup that you can have. Best case is a Gmail since we are using um, uh, 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 what's it called Google Classroom. But um, if they already have an email, they can likely use their, the, the email that they already have. Um, even if it's not a Gmail. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to open this up so you can all talk if you'd like. Um, if anyone has any questions at all, if you, if you have background noise wherever you're at, if you want to mute yourself again, but I unmuted all of you, any, any questions? Um, one thing that came up is that any word on land purchase and winter bubble. So it doesn't look like I have the bubbles in storage. I have the turf in storage. It's sitting there in storage. And um, I have a meeting this week to talk about land. There hasn't been any progress made on any land yet. So it doesn't look like even if we get land before winter, um, it's going to be nearly impossible to develop the land and get the permits and everything needed to to put up a bubble. So um, it's likely going to be a, a next year project, but with the girls being the youngest girls in the club right now, they will reap the benefits hopefully starting next year. But um, I, there hasn't been any progress on it yet. Will there be another coach? Another coach like an assistant for me? Yes. Since I can. Costa left. Well, I have Coach AJ that is very interested in working with the girls. So I'm going to request that he – and he does a very good job. He's younger. He does a very good job at the technical and the physical aspect of the game. Um, he needs some help with the tactical, which is why I'm taking him under my wing and, um, and help, having him help on certain points. But he already expressed interest the other day after working with the girls, saying that you know the girls are great and uh, he would love to work with them um, over the year. So – He's likely the one that I bring on. Um, in terms of a director of coaching, we, based on the number of players that we have and the number of coaches and um, teams that we have, thing didn't feel like it was necessary to have a director of coaching at this point. 
Does anyone have any other questions? <laughs> Are you sending a link for Google Classroom to the kids and the parents? I can. Um, if if the players' emails are in Team Snap, then I already have their email and I can send it to them. If the players don't have any information in Team Snap, I'll have to send it right to the right to the parents. Um, but what I can do as well as I can just give anyone this code twenty eight e five z four. I can just send that code, and you can just go to Google Classroom, set up your account. And then just add yourself to the class with that code. With that code. Will Will you send that email then with the code? Yes, I'll put. I'll send the in the email that I send to. I'll send it to all in Team Snap. I'll just send the link to join automatically, as well as the code to join if if um if you need the code. But you don't need the code if you have the link. If that makes sense. Yes. Um. Someone asked about the Dallas Cup. Um, yes, the Dallas Cup is in Dallas. Um, it's in Texas. That is the Sting Ran tournament. Um, it's typically mandatory for all Stings to Sting teams to go. However, since we are on the other side of the country, they're leaving it optional for us. Um, we just have to decide um, as a team if we can get 15, 16 players to go. That would be great. If we can't, if we get less that want to go, um, maybe there's players out there that, within the Sting Club that can join us um, and just kind of be guests for our team. So there is a there's options. We just I'm going to put it out there very soon to see if that's something we want to do. It is the weekend of Thanksgiving weekend, I believe, right? So if it's Thursday's Thanksgiving, that weekend is tournament so i don't know what vacations or everything looks like for everyone but that would be a very cool experience hey we can include in in <laughs> can you include the address of that the address of the dallas cup yes where it would be yeah yes i can definitely do that it's on this thing website okay. but i can do that that'd be great um yeah that, i'm gonna be if, doing sorry go ahead if we have enough interest in the Dallas Cup, would we fundraise for that? We can or, actually, well, that's another thing that I did forget to mention was we, we need to work, start working on some, one, a couple of team bonding events, and two, some fundraising for the girls. Because that, in the end, fundraising, whatever fundraising we can do, and we can, we can do as a team. Like the club fundraising is one thing, but you don't get that much. We need to work on it as a team so that we can have the opportunity to go things like this. So we can do a big fundraising event that's maybe just focused on this Dallas Cup to cover whatever uh, hotels or cover airfares or cover whatever it is. Um, that would be a good goal for the girls. But that's very difficult to get that much fundraising done before November, but we can absolutely give it a try. Eric, you mentioned something about uh, team building. Uh, I just got done organizing a big team building activity for my older daughter's team at Blue Mountain. Yes, I did awesome. hear about that. It was great. It was, awesome. it was an awesome experience. And if you're interested in that, I can talk to you more about that and what it exactly what it is. And, and, and you can decide if it's something you want uh, the Sting team to do. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, am, I am very big on the team being – a family in a sense, right? Because I mean, you'll realize very quickly with me, I end up caring for the players very, very much. So I care about what, how they, everything about their game and then anything off the field that they need from me. You know, I do everything I can to help them in all aspects of, of, of ever, everything. I mean, they it got to a point with, with a couple of my boys that they, they were struggling with certain things in their life. And I, you know, I could just was a mentor for them. Right. So it's, I want the girls to be together for as long as possible. If I keep the same team together for five, seven years uh, with very little tur turnover, that's a good goal for me. So the best way to do that is these team bonding events and getting the girls to know each other off the field, getting to know me off the field, getting to know, you know, the, the parents getting to know each other and then you guys all getting to know me as well. So I think any team bonding events, even if it's something little, I saw the 03, oh, the, the 0304 team is doing like a, dog walking event or something like that um 
they just go out and they just walk dogs. I don't know. It doesn't seem too fun, but hey, it's a team bonding event. Um, but yeah, any, yeah, if you had the opportunity, if you, anyone has any ideas for that, I would love to do that. Um, yes, someone mentioned something about community service hours. I'm actually having a meeting with Sting this week and talk about a bunch of things, and that's one of the things on my list. Community service hours, I believe the players need to do 10. Um, so that's something that we need to start doing. We need to start tracking. Uh, there's a bunch of things that we do. I mean, there's girls were asking me about the tassels. I'm still getting information on that. All the girls need to have tassels that are going to be sent to us, and we need to um, – we need to have a little tassel ceremony. Um, still getting some information on that, but that's kind of just something that Sting does. But there's a couple things that I still need to get work out with, I guess, the corporate side of things. So um, I can get you that information as soon as I have it. Sure, I, I hope you guys can see. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I would help out. I'd be interested in doing the community service hours with the girls. I can help set that up. It's Pam. Awesome. Thank you, Pam. Awesome. Thank you. I have a lot of activities through the hospital I can work with too. Good, good, that's perfect. Um, someone mentioned something about free training as a recruiting tool. Um, yeah, absolutely. The girls, our girls, these girls are the only Sting team in this area that have a fall season. So Coach AJ, Coach Ray, their main focus over the fall and then into the winter is, is training for the younger players, getting younger players into the club. We have a very good group of 07 girls that are kind of just like watching how we do in a sense because they want to join us next year. But for them, it was too late in the, um, in the year for them to join us last year. By the time we had um, tryouts, it was just it was too late. They needed to commit to other teams. So um, I have a feeling this year's next year is going to be a big recruitment of players. And with that being said, the year that the girls spend with me is, is a great opportunity for me to get to know and understand them and get to know where their work ethic is, even if they're not the best player, as long as they're working and as long as their desire to improve is there. I love that and I can work with that because that, I mean, I would know what they're capable of doing. And then when I see another player for an hour at next year's tryouts, if there's any tie by any means or if it's very close, I'm going to go with the player that I know has the good work ethic, the good attitude, the good family in a sense that, you know, supportive and, and gets their kids to everything. And that's the player that I'm going to go with. So, um, yeah, that's just a little bit more about how I operate. And in the end, I kind of just try to do the best for the player that I possibly can. All right. I think I, so I got through everything. I'm going to be sending up a follow-up email tonight with some information with that Google stuff. If anyone has any more questions, feel free to send me an email. And then if it's a question for the entire group that I think everyone will get used from, I will put it in the email to them as well. And if you have any feedback on this meeting, I, I can definitely use feedback on it as well. Um, Zoom seems to have let me go for 52 minutes, so I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, anyone have anything else? No, I'm good, thanks. All right. Um, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will follow up with the question that was just asked about who's on each roster. But again, the thing with the roster is it's really just logistics. Um, when I when I get the schedule for that that first or for all the games, I'm going to assign 15 players to that first game, and that could be a completely different 15 players that go to the next game. It really just depends on on uh, on everything in terms of effort, practice, attendance, um, and then the sensibility level. Okay. Um, I will talk to everyone soon. Practice tomorrow. I'll see everyone soon. Yeah, give me that one. Thank you. Okay, go. Thank Bye. you, Eric. You're welcome.